You may have heard of the Pan-Indian concept of the seven generations, that many Native communities, when making decisions, consider the impact that those decisions will have on the future seven generations. With this line of thinking, Native people today are reaping rewards or difficulties that are the result of the decisions and experiences of the previous seven generations. To put this simply, our ancestors' experiences deeply influence the people we are today, and we as future ancestors have a responsibility to make decisions that will benefit and support the generations who will follow us. It turns out that this concept is also backed by tons of Western scientific research, and that the indigenous understanding of time and our experience of historical trauma is totally valid, not that we need Western science to back this up. Research suggests that experiencing traumatic historical events may cause actual biological changes in the genes of future generations. These genetic changes could be a part of what leads to high rates of diabetes, obesity, and coronary heart disease in native populations. Every day, researchers in the field of epigenetics are adding to the evidence base of this concept. But on an even more relatable level, when parents or grandparents experience major traumatic events in their lives, the coping mechanisms, behavior patterns, mental health challenges, and ways of processing trauma are often passed down to their children. Common traumatic events that have been experienced in the Native community include genocide, forced family separation through movements like the Indian boarding school movement, ecocide or the destruction of the environment, racism, legal and illegal discrimination, and sexual violence and sex trafficking. Often, historical trauma is experienced by a group or community of people who share similar elements of identity, whether that be related to ethnicity, gender, religion, sexual orientation, culture, and more. While historically traumatic events are not always physically violent, they can be emotionally violent and have deep impact on the mental, emotional, physical, and even financial health of a community for generations. Sometimes the impact of historical trauma or trauma that has been passed down to us by our elders and ancestors manifests in ways we don't notice, like in our decisions about who we trust, our ability to lead physically healthy lives, or even our relationship with school and learning. Historical trauma has unfortunately been an integral part of the Native experience since settler contact, and these traumatic events were experienced on an enormous scale. It's important to remember we are not all doomed to be consumed and controlled by our trauma. In fact, many of the skills and cultural practices that Native people managed to protect throughout the centuries of violent colonialism can be used to process, heal, and move forward from historical trauma in a healthy way. Ceremonies, culturally responsive therapy, storytelling, eating traditional foods, caring for the land, education, intergenerational mentorships, and so much more can pave the way to a healthier life in which communities impacted by trauma are not defined by it. For some perspective, here's an example of a timeline for a Native youth in California. For a Native student sitting in your class right now, it is highly possible that within the previous seven generations in their family, someone experienced forced removal from their ancestral land, was forced to anglicize or take on a Spanish name, was forced into indentured servitude in order to survive, was forced to sell their body for food or money, was forced into an unwanted marriage, experienced the destruction of their lands in the name of gold or settler development, or had a bounty placed on their head by the California government itself. If that student has an ancestor born before 1924, then that ancestor was not born with an American citizenship despite this land being their ancestral home since time immemorial. If that student has a family member who attended school before 1973, it is possible that their family member attended a residential Indian boarding school, where Native people's hair was cut short and they were forbidden from practicing cultural traditions. These events do not just go away. They are often passed down to future generations and will continue to be passed down until they are addressed in a healthy way by both Native and non-Native people. Unfortunately, many public institutions in the United States have been historically weaponized against Native people. Like school, for instance, which was used as a weapon for assimilating Native children and separating them from their families. Or land ownership, which was used to break apart Native communities who once lived in close proximity with one another. Or even race, which simply is not a traditional concept in most Indigenous cultures. 
When Native families and students show resistance to these systems, know that it is because of the devastating impact these systems have had on Native people for centuries. In the classroom, we see the remnants of trauma, both historical and contemporary, in lots of ways. Behavioral outbursts, emotionally shutting down, difficulty making or maintaining friendships, distrust of school as an institution, are just a few. As most teachers know, our students sometimes bring their home lives with them to class. And so having some understanding of the historical roots of this trauma for Native communities can be helpful when supporting their success.